Greetings. This is Larry Stoll of Pace Turf, bringing you a short description of our understanding of how high soil iron and low soil phosphorus might work together to suppress pole invasion into bentgrass greens. This is a familiar sight at golf courses that have bentgrass greens. Frequently, between five and seven years, poa begins to invade the new bentgrass. After a few years, poa invasion peaks and the result is frequently a bumpy and uneven putting surface. New management practices that include growth regulators and wetting agents have improved the surface trueness of poa bent greens, but a pure bentgrass green continues to be the ultimate goal. The reason poa is so difficult to control on golf courses is due to the biology of the plant. Poa has the ability to produce hundreds of seeds per plant and poa can survive in many environments around the golf course. Seeds are blown in by the wind and moved by golfers and golf course equipment. Making the challenge even more difficult, poa seeds can survive in the soil for many years. There is a continuous influx of new seed no matter how hard you try to maintain poa free course. In recent years, some golf course superintendents have focused upon application of ferrous sulfate at 6 to 12 ounces per thousand square feet every 10 to 14 days and four or more gallons of water per thousand square feet. These high rates of iron seem to suppress POA invasion and, in some cases, have resulted in a reduction of POA. Unfortunately, the efficacy of these treatments have not been published, however the results are interesting enough to pursue. Let's take a look at a case study where low phosphorus was used to suppress POA invasion into A4 bent grass greens in Southern California. George Kenny was superintendent at Talega Golf Course at the time, and he called us to take a look at some problems he was having. His greens had been off color and were not recovering from normal cultural practices. The symptoms were typical for low phosphorus stress. Upon inspection of the greens, we could not find any POA invading the green surface, but POA had been heavily colonized in the surrounds and collars of the greens. George had experience using low phosphorus strategies for suppressing POA, and he had not applied phosphorus for five years. We had heard of this strategy previously, and there's research to indicate that high phosphorus can reverse the effects of arsenic herbicides that were used to control POA in the past. We also know that POA seems to do well in high phosphorus soil conditions. So how do we put the pieces together? How might low phosphorus and high iron work together to suppress POA? Let's look a little more closely at the Talega situation to get started. This photograph illustrates the invasion of POA into the collar of the green at Talega. There was no POA visible invading the green. No plant diseases were observed. Unfortunately, the bent grass was suffering at this point. This plant from Talega illustrates typical symptoms of phosphorus deficiency. The purple color is caused by production and accumulation of anthocyanins. To test the hypothesis that phosphorus was involved, Two one half pound per thousand square foot treatments of monoammonium phosphate 11550 were applied. Plywood was placed on the green during the application to produce non treated areas for comparison. The visual results are illustrated in the next slide. The dark square areas of turf illustrate the locations where plywood was placed before application of the monoammonium phosphate. These areas did not receive the phosphorus application. The A4 responded well to the phosphorus applications and the purple color disappeared. To complete the simple study, soil samples were collected from plots on three different greens representing phosphorus treated and non-treated areas. Pairs of soil samples were pulled from three greens that had non-treated and treated areas for comparison. Cup cutter samples were pulled to a depth of approximately four inches and the soil was analyzed. We also collected soil samples from the collars that were heavily infested by POA. Unlike the greens that did not receive phosphorus fertilizers for five years, the collars received phosphorus fertilizers during the fall overseeding process every year. Here's what we discovered from the soil tests. The Olson phosphorus test is used to estimate plant available phosphorus at soil pH values above 7.4. The extractant is sodium bicarbonate. The soil pH at Talega ranged between 7 and 7.6. Phosphorus levels were significantly higher in the monoammonium phosphate treated areas compared to the non-treated samples. Also note the higher phosphorus in the collar area where POA is present and healthy. Pace Turf's current minimum sufficiency guideline for bentgrass is 12 parts per million using the Olson phosphorus test. The green samples were below the Pace Turf guideline. However, if you're trying to suppress POA, the minimum sufficiency guideline might drop to 5 parts per million as was observed at Talega. I should also note there was no significant difference observed in soil nitrogen levels for any of the treatments. 
One of the problems with soil testing is knowing what extraction system you should use. For comparison, we ran Malik 3 analysis on the same samples that we ran with the Olsen phosphorus. Malik 3 analysis is the most common method used by the larger analytical soil laboratories. This method uses an extractant that is composed of ammonium nitrate, ammonium fluoride, acetic acid, nitric acid, and the chelator EDTA. Melic 3 extraction is the best extractant for neutral and acid soils, but it overextracts phosphorus and cations associated with carbonates in high pH soils. At Talega, there was no difference in soil phosphorus levels when phosphorus treated and non treated areas were compared. The Pace Turf Normal Sufficiency Guideline is 50 parts per million for Melic 3. All of the samples were below the paste turf target for phosphorus. Historical trends for Melic 3 phosphorus at Talega illustrate how the bentgrass mined phosphorus from the soil. Bentgrass performance began to suffer when the phosphorus levels dropped below the paste turf sufficiency guideline of 50 parts per million Melic 3 phosphorus. There's a fine line between the phosphorus needed for healthy bentgrass growth and depletion to levels that results in unacceptable turf grass performance. Is there some way that we can limit the amount of phosphorus that is available to the shallow rooted poa without severely restricting the phosphorus that is available to the deep rooted bentgrass? Let's look at iron and how it might be used to influence the phosphorus availability at the surface of a green. The phosphorus saturation index is another measure of phosphorus availability. This index, also known as a PSI, is used in environmental management to help predict when phosphorus levels are too high to allow additional phosphorus to be added to a soil safely. PSI values above 1.25 result in phosphorus leaching to groundwater or running off the surface of the soil to surface water. The PSI is also used in crop production systems to identify sufficiency levels based upon availability. The target that we have identified for robust turf growth is a PSI above 0.3. Again, this is for robust turf growth. Now let's take a look at how PSI is calculated. The PSI is a ratio of Melic 3 phosphorus to iron plus aluminum. If we increase iron levels, available phosphorus or PSI goes down. Therefore, application of iron might reduce phosphorus availability at the surface of a green sufficiently to reduce POA growth. Let's compare the PSI values for the Talega soils. In this graph, you can see that the PSI value for the collar area is significantly higher than the non-treated area. Although the PSI value for the treated area increased slightly compared to the non-treated area, the difference was not significant. However, following the phosphorus application, the PSI for the treated area was not significantly lower compared to the collar soil. All of the areas reported a PSI below the 0.3 sufficiency level that we have identified at Pace Turf. Why is this interesting? Let's go back to the PSI equation and take a look. Take a look at this equation again. If we increase iron levels in the soil, we will be able to reduce the PSI, thereby reducing availability of phosphorus. If the system can be managed properly, we can imagine very low PSI levels at the surface of the green where poa roots are located. Bentgrass might survive by mining phosphorus from deeper profiles of the soil, but poa can only pull phosphorus from the top inch or two. If the target is to suppress POA by tying up phosphorus, application of ferrous sulfate might get the job done. Although we have not seen published research using this strategy, we know some research has been conducted using high iron levels. If you want to start evaluating suppression of POA in bentgrass greens using high iron levels, begin by testing weekly applications of ferrous sulfate at 6 ounces per thousand square feet, applied in more than 4 gallons of water per thousand square feet. Begin on a practice screen or nursery until you are confident that you see poa reduction that you are looking for and the appearance of the green meets your members' expectations. Until we review replicated trials conducted by university researchers, independent researchers, or golf course superintendents, high iron application for suppression of poa will remain an interesting theory, not a standard practice. If the theory works, as we suspect, to be successful in poa suppression will require walking a fine line between healthy bentgrass and bentgrass that is deficient in phosphorus. If you're going to set up a small test area to evaluate iron for suppression of POA in bentgrass greens, please take a look at the submission guidelines for SuperJournal before you get started. With just a little extra effort, you can collect all of the data you need to publish your results in SuperJournal so that everyone can benefit from your efforts.